So today, uh, two classes of functions we are going to study, exponential and logarithmic functions. So the exponential function you've probably done quite a bit of work with before in even Algebra 1 as well as Algebra 2 and uh, pre-calculus. They're really important functions that describe a lot of classes of things. Um, logarithmic functions you probably have not seen unless you've taken a biology class in which you studied uh, carrying capacity. So that we're going to look at these two, but we're going to look at them now from a calculus perspective because calculus allows you to um, understand these functions at a little bit um, deeper level in terms of what they're actually doing and why they do the things they do. <clears throat> so to start with, here's a separable differential equation. K is a constant, so you can treat it like a constant. It's an unstated constant, but it's a constant. Y is a variable, and Y is the uh, dependent variable and t is the independent variable, so well, y depends on you know probably time. And uh, so go ahead and uh, solve the separable differential equation. And something that I really didn't have you necessarily do when we introduced separable differential equations last week, which is isolate the y in the general solution. So when you're going to get an expression that has a y and a c and a and a t in it, so I want you to solve it for y at the end. All right. So take a minute and go ahead and do that, and then come back. Okay, hopefully you're back having done that. So now, uh, let's see, how do we solve this? We're going to go, uh, we have to bring the, the y over, so we're going to have 1 over y uh, dy equals k dt. And then we're going to anti-differentiate anti -differentiate with respect to y on this side and t on this side. Then we're going to have uh, antiderivative of 1 over y is ln absolute value of y. And then that equals... Um, so if I do the antiderivative of k, just like I was doing antiderivative of 3, it would be 3t. I'm do, doing antiderivative of k, it's going to be kt. And uh, here's where I would put the plus c in. All right, and then, uh, so, so now really I've, I've gotten the general solution already. This is the general solution. Now we want to isolate the y in the general solution, way to get the y by itself. So how you do that, since this is uh, ln of x, remember, I want to keep coming back to this. Uh, if I have any uh, equation, f of a equals b, and I'm trying to solve for the a, then I use the inverse function, a equals f inverse of b. Right? So a function can always pass to the other side as its inverse. There are other ways to express how we solve this logarithmic equation, but I think this one appeals really to the formal definition of an inverse that's so like a very um, fundamental concept uh, in algebra that we, we don't really emphasize, I think, enough. So what that means is I have ln of y on one side. I can just pass that ln to the other side as e to the x because e to the x is the uh, inverse of ln of y. So now I have uh, absolute value of y is equal to e to the kt plus c. Yeah. And now, how do I solve with this absolute value? Well, I mean, if I have absolute value of x equals 4, then x equals positive 4 or negative 4, right? So if I have absolute value of y equals e to the kt plus c, um, I have, then I'm going to say y equals plus or minus e to the kt plus c. So if you have this, then you've done what I asked you to do at the opening, which is um, solve the separable differential equation. That's what we got here. You did that. And isolate the y. It really should look like that. It would be easy to lose this plus or minus or just not know what to do with the absolute value, but that's what it is. I mean, essentially, we're saying that uh, if the absolute value of x equals a, then x equals plus or minus a. That's just how you solve an absolute value equation and is arguably sort of the definition of the absolute value function. All right. Now, um, suppose you had, uh, in addition to this, let's say you had a, uh, uh, an initial condition. Uh, and I'm going to properly, it's going to be properly an initial condition now. So initial condition means uh, that I'm using time. Uh, so initial condition means time equals zero, t equals zero. So my initial condition... Uh, I don't know why I wrote conditional, because I'm talking and writing at the same time. Uh, I'm going to call that point, uh, if I can write that correctly. Now I'm thinking about the fact that I can't write and think at the same time, and trying to write at the same time as I do that, and that's really impossible. Anyway, so let's say we have a, an arbitrary initial condition. We just call it y0, right? So whatever whatever the value of y is when, at, when t is equal to 0. This is t, this is y. All right? Then we could use that to solve for what the c is here. Then... Um, so you could solve that by substituting in here. So your y is going to be y0 equals um, plus or minus um, e to the c. Well, I, actually, I've left out. Um, yeah, I've left out uh, an interesting consideration up here that we could look at. 
So what I could do is, because this is a sum of exponents, you can split off the, and they do this a lot in the AP exam. If I have an exponent, my C is up in the exponent. We can split this off as e to the C times e to the kt. So what that does is has the effect of like pulling that C, that unknown C, out of the exponential function. Then when I'm down here and I'm using uh, t equals zero, so I have e to the c times e to the k times zero, and e to the zero is one, so I have um, just uh, y zero equals e to the c. All right, so now this, this e to the c, you know, I haven't manipulated or changed it or anything. This e to the c is this e to the c. So that means that I can get a particular solution with this given initial condition, you know, so we're finding now a particular solution, although the y0 is unspecified, particular solution um, is what we're getting here. And then what I can do is take this function, this is my general solution, and plug in our, uh, now our value for e to the c. So I'm going to say y equals um, our e to the c is the is y zero uh, and then and then e to the kt you know okay so hmm, what can i say about the plus minus i don't know if i open that can can of worms right now because really this is going to be plus or minus e to the c so in effect the plus or minus ends up being part of what the y zero is and so that's why we we lose the plus or minus here. It would follow to sort of demonstrate that this e to the c is always positive at the same time this one is, and this e to the c is always negative at the same time this is. But that might be a rabbit hole. So I, I'll try. I'll avoid that rabbit hole. It's probably solvable. Um, but for now, we'll just say that plus or minus e to the c is the y zero. So this becomes important because it means we have this general equation of uh, exponential function that includes the initial value of the uh, of the uh, whatever quantity we're tracking. All right, so this is a general exponential equation that you've done so much with. So what I want to show here, what we particularly want to show is, um, well, let's show two things. If I do the derivative of this general exponential equation, this is something we could have done and probably did do a couple of times um, much earlier, then that derivative is going to be um, k times y0 times e to the kt, right? Because with my uh, chain rule, we're going to put the k out. This is multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. So, and then, but y0 e to the kt is the original function. So dy dt is equal to some constant times the original function. So this we could do using derivatives. Uh, separable differential equation says if we have dy dt equals ky, we must have y equals y0 e to the kt. So, so especially, you know, try to understand that what this equation, this derivative equation is saying that we um, that we end up with here and that we start with here. What it is saying is the rate of growth is proportional to the amount present. And that's what gives exponential functions all their characters of rapid growth, uh, um, the most rapid growth, in fact, um, that you know upward curve that they have. It's why they model things like population and investments, all right? Because the more you have, the faster you grow, all right? That's true of populations. It's true of uh, infections, or the more infections we have, the faster it's going to spread. It's true of, you know, random things like rumors. The more people know the rumor, the faster that rumor is going to spread. Up to a point, which is where the logarithmic, oh, that shouldn't be logarithmic. Geez, look how far off I am here. This is supposed to be, you guys know about logarithmic functions. We're going to be looking at logistic functions. Logistic. It's actually something quite different. So the logistic function is going to um, give us a way to talk about the fact that if, if I have a rumor and the more people know the rumor, the faster it spreads. But up to a certain point when everybody knows the rumor, then it's not going to spread anymore. Same with a disease, same with a population. That's what the logistic equation is going to do. So what this equation says is the more I have, the faster it grows.
but there's no limit to how fast it grows. What we see here is, if I have that situation, any situation where the more of something I have, the faster it grows, that has to be an exponential function. Only an exponential function can do that. The, I have here a base e, but you can do essentially a change of base formula and have any base for the exponential function. Exponential functions as a class are all equivalent. All right? So if I have um, an exponential function, then the rate of growth is proportional to the amount present. And if the rate of growth is a pr proportional to the amount present, I must have an exponential function. Now, ever, so that's the first thing to understand about exponential functions that we understand for a cal from a calculus perspective. All right, so understand this, that it's the solution, it's the unique solution to this differential equation. That's the calculus understanding. Now, everything else that we're gonna do with uh, these exponential functions, we're gonna do in the next couple of examples and homework, is actually all things you already know. Once you, once you know this equation, all right, then you can solve any exponential uh, you know, applied problems, and that's what we're gonna do next.